Fire Girl, Chapter 8 Over the next few days, mostly from things Mrs. Tracy said when Jessica Feeney wasn't there, which was a lot of the time, I picked up more stuff about her. One morning, I was in the hall near the classroom door when I overheard her telling one of the parents that Jessica and her family had been living in town for a week or two already. They had come down from Boston and were renting a condo really close to my house while she went for a bunch of tests and treatments at the hospital in New Haven. Jessica just finished undergoing some skin grafts, she said to Darlene's mother as I put my lunch in my locker. Some more grafts, she added. She's had quite a few already. Undergoing was the word she used. She said it again to the class when Jessica was out of the room after lunch. It sounded so creepy. I imagined someone lying flat on a table, going under some kind of horrible machine. After supper that night, I searched the net on my computer and found out basically that skin grafts are when doctors take skin from one part of a person and stick it on another part that is damaged, hoping it will grow normally. It seemed like some kind of horror story with bizarre people in wet basements doing things with bodies. I also found out that sometimes scientists grow stuff that looks and feels like skin, and they make it in test tubes and then sew it onto where your skin is burned. Other times, they take skin from an animal that's sort of pink, like a pig, and they use that on you, at least to start. Her face, as I read, it was mostly your own skin because it matched better, although Jessica's didn't really match much. It took time to heal, though, and then it blends better. They have pictures on the internet that I didn't want to see, but I looked at anyway. They made me feel sick after eating, so I stopped searching. Just before bed, though, I was online again, and I saw that there was that there were long times between when burned people did the treatments to see how well the skin grafts took. I guess they didn't go so well for Jessica and she probably started was starting some more now. Somebody, I thought it might be have been Courtney, but I wasn't sure because it made its way all the way across the room, said that Jessica's parents wanted to keep up with her Catholic school between hospital visits because she had lost almost a year of school's time. Jessica's been to a number of hospitals over the last months, Mrs. Tracy told us, so it's likely that she won't be at St. Catherine's for very long. Though New Haven has, of course, one of the best hospitals, so there's really no telling. The next day in the hall, before lunch, I found myself telling Samantha Embriano and Joey that even though Jessica would normally have taken my bus in the morning, she didn't. When I was talking, when I was taking the absentee notes to the office this morning, I saw a man drive her in late, I said. <clears throat> and yesterday afternoon, the same guy came early to pick her up. So that's her father, said Samantha Embriano. I guess, I said. Does he look normal? Asked Joey. I laughed. What? Yeah, of course. So he wasn't in the fire? I felt a shiver run up my back. I'd never thought of that before. No, I guess not. When I came home from school on Wednesday, my mother was cutting vegetables at the kitchen counter. I dropped my backpack on the table and washed my hands. She told me she heard from another mom that there was a new girl in my class. I felt nervous all of a sudden. I had never said anything about Jessica although she was pretty much all I was thinking about. I tried to be cool about it. Jessica Feeney, I said, wiping my hands dry. <clears throat> right. I shrugged and didn't say much, not actually going to my room to start homework, but looking at the mail on the table and flipping through a clothes catalog that had come. I saw a picture of a girl who reminded me of Courtney. Then my mom started asking questions, and I gave her some answers until somehow we were into what Jessica Feeney was like, and I used the word melted. My mother made a sound between her teeth. I stopped. I never meant to say it. It just came out. I mean, not that, I said, just, you know, 
She was looking right at me now, her face drawing itself in like it does when she's when she thinks something bad is happening to us. What? I said. I didn't want to make too much out of it. All I wanted now was to get to my room and do my homework. Poor girl. What is she like? I mean, is she nice? I don't know. I guess she's okay, I said, slinging my pack over my shoulder again. She doesn't say much. She lives just over there. She pointed at the wall of the living room. I know. I stepped into the dining room. I was sweating again, and my shirt was wet, and I wanted to change. Have you talked to her? I don't know. It's school. There's stuff to do. Mrs. Tracy keeps us busy. Nobody talks to her much. There's stuff to do. Well, it might help to talk to her. I think I squinted at her. Help? What does that mean? I don't need help. I'm okay. Help. Help her. Help her. She said this, shaking her head as if she was going to say something more. But she didn't say anything else right then. I stood for another second. And then I went upstairs to change and do my homework. After that first time in class on Monday, I had almost never looked right at Jessica Feeney. Not the next day or the next. It was really too hard to look at that face. It didn't get any better if you looked at it. I mean, it didn't get any easier to look at. She answered the teacher's question sometimes. Her voice was quiet and hoarse and not at all clear. She never raised her hand, but Mrs. Tracy called on her every now and again, and Jessica answered. During math, she left her desk to sharpen her pencil. Sometimes she went into the hall to her locker and was gone in the hall in the laboratory for a while and then came back. She moved around all right, even though her legs were always covered with thick stockings. Maybe it hurt for her to move, but if it did, she didn't show it. Then on Thursday of that week, a whole bunch of strange things happened. I found that I started in little bits raising my head to look at her but always when I knew she was turned the other way or couldn't see me. I discovered that if you didn't see the edge of her face or her hand or arm lying on the desk, she looked almost like any girl with dirty hair. It was sort of crushed and matted in the back. It almost began to feel as if there was a person in there. As if there was a person in there. It seems stupid to say that. But that's what I felt like. It was hard to think about her as being at all like the rest of us. Still, I remember letting out a deep breath the first time I found myself looking at her from behind. It was as if I had been holding my breath ever since she stepped into our class. She was turned away. You could almost forget about the way she looked. It almost didn't matter that Jessica Feeney, the horribly burned girl, was sitting one seat away from me at the head of at the head of row two. Jeff, on the other hand, and Rich were acting as if there was something else to know about Jessica. There was, they said, the whole question of how. <laughs>